I'm, as you know, Joe Fury, star of stage, screen, whatever else there is out there. But you never see me in, the, in my makeup room. You never see the magic occur when I get into the, the character. But I'm, when I'm getting into my character, I can't be worried about the scourge on society these days. And I'm talking about, of course, crepey skin. Some of you are saying, Joe can't have crepey skin. Mere mortals have crepey skin. His skin looks so perfect. Yes, some of you are saying, Joe, it's so open of you to talk about your crepey skin here in the public eye. Well, that's the kind of performer I am. Totally transparent. Well, I'm going to tell you my secret today. I'm telling you this because I am the kind of performer that lets it all hang out. Crepe Erase. Crepe Erase. It's a beautiful product. Uh, something that I use every time I go on the stage or screen. Or in my, usually my makeup person puts it on, but I'm going to show you how you can apply it here. You can apply it to your skin. Even if you're not a performer. If you're just worried about your dry crepiness, your ugly crepey crepey. So let's get a close up. Let me show you how it works. You just put it in a little plastic bowl and then you take your little powder puffer or spongy sponge sponge thing they call I don't know what to call. I'm not the makeup department. So when you, you identify a place, oh look, there's a weird little blemish. Put a little bit of makeup on. Apply it. And it's gone! You see? It's completely gone. And you can apply this not only to scrapey skin, but also to if you have a pimple. It goes away! goes completely away. It's like magic. You see? Gone. Totally gone. Let's say I want to play a part where I don't have a mustache. I have this beautiful mustache and it's sort of my trademark. But let's say I don't want it anymore. Gone! Completely <laughs> gone! <laughs> Yes, now I can play anyone. I can play. I could play Winston Churchill. Or I could play Winston Churchill. Or I could play. Ah. Uh, Jerry Leto. <laughs> when he plays the Joker. I could play the Joker! Easily with this. And still retain my beautiful beard. For <laughs> off stage. And then you say, hey, Joe, does it work on the eyes? Because I've got some crow feet crow feet that I want to get rid of. Well, I'll show you. Let's say I wanted to get rid of this crow foot right here. <laughs> gone! Completely gone! Let's say I didn't want to have eyes in my next... Like I was playing Helen Keller and I want to have no eyes. I could just get rid of them. Just gone like that. We can even place other eyes in there if we wanted to. If I want, didn't want to have blue eyes, I could have brown eyes and no eyebrows. Yes! It's quite wonderful what you can do! You can put it all over your face and put it on your hands! It's a marvelous product. So, the next time you want to get rid of creepy skin, just take Joe Fury's advice. And use crepe erase. Crepe erase me may cause bleeding gums, thoughts of hysteria, and <laughs> swollen ankles. Oh.
Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope that uh, you're doing somewhat well today. Today is one of those days, I think, where, you know, the world's having a difficult time as usual. So we're, we've bunkered ourselves down here in the lunch therapy studios. Today we've got a really uplifting thing behind me. It is uh, Jeff Lohman's dog, Mocha, just running around so excited about life that he, she is running around like a mad person. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get some of that going on here. We've got Tom Kearney. We've got, at least we've got a mad person here. Um, I don't know about uh, anything. I can't promise anything after that. Uh, let's get into the breathing. Tom is in the uh, green room right now. Oh, yes. uh, bonging out with uh, Boney. Um, Joe Fury, um, you know, Crepe Race is sponsoring the show today. So very generous of them. We're going to have a contest. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a contest. So yeah. that'll be cool. Um, it's going to be the chat room against Tom Kearney. That's going to be, that's what's going to be. And the winner Ooh. takes all. The winner takes all. Uh, so let me get some drums going here and let's get some breathing happening. Kamala says, hi, Tom. We tried to get Maura Kearney on the show today. You know, I don't know, maybe she'll pop in. I don't know, but she is um, definitely a hot commodity. So uh, we don't know whether we're going to be able to get that. But we've got Tom. And one of the cool things about Tom is he was the first guest ever on this show. In through the nose, out through the toes. Hold it. The Reddick went some crepe race. Yeah. It's very, very expensive, that stuff. Let it go. <laughs> I have a bottle of it around here. I keep it in a safe because uh, it's just so, you know, so precious. In through the nose, out through the toes. Hold it. Let it go. It's a little like that stuff that I put on my cats, the anti-flea stuff. Lunch therapy, spontaneity, spontaneity, improvisational magic. Yes, that's about maybe one of our new slogans. Uh, the stuff I put on my cat for fleas um, costs like, I mean, if you, it's worth more than anything in the world, any substance in the world, because I think it costs like, I don't know, $20 per thing or something like that. It's just, I don't know what they make it out of gold. Um, even gold, I think, would be not expensive enough for that. Got some loud drums happening here. In through the nose, out through the toes. Hold it. Creeper race. Oh no, Jose. We don't want you to disappear, that's for sure. I need some gray race. You know, you'll see actually, um, Tom Kearney is going to be talking about some gray race later on today. Um, yeah. Okay, let's get into the interview. We've got some chatting going on here. Let's make this happen. It's Interview Friday live on Lunch Therapy. Yes, all right. No, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. No, the show's starting right now. I gotta go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just call my agent. You might call my agent. Okay. Yeah, Whoa. he's here. Oh my God, we oh, had that. Awesome. We had that very phone in a contest uh, recently. It's yeah. a Fisher Price phone. Oh, did you? This yeah. is my. Uh, this is uh, our kids' phone uh, right. growing up, and uh, I got a couple of couple of the toys here. Uh, this is my uh, my writing partner, Spider Man. Oh yeah, uh, Taylor Mason was really into Spider Man growing up. Uh, three of the uh, birthday parties were S Spidey related, so uh, yeah. Wow. So that's good. Yeah. Is that what's how you on, inspire George? yourself? Yeah. How do you how do you inspire yourself? You're a prolific, prolific writer of uh, short films. I don't know journals, um, books. Uh, I don't know. Um, mainly uh, screenplays, right? How do you how do you keep mainly your creative flow going? Wife. Yeah. yeah. I, I mainly I, I I I drive my wife crazy with it uh, because I I don't know I, I'll just be I'll just talk out of the out of nowhere something will just come out and I'm like I gotta write that down and in fact I I have to uh, I have to keep a pad of paper next to the bed because I wake up a couple times at night 
and uh, write stuff and scribble it down. And the next morning, I'm like, what the hell? What, what the hell was <laughs> that? What, what was I talking about? She goes, I don't know. You were mumbling. So, I got to say, uh, I had a dream this week before I booked you for the show. I had a dream where you and Mora were on the show. It was so weird. So like my dreams well, are becoming a reality. Well, I haven't seen more yet. Manifest but. And I believe in that. I, I, I believe in the, the power of intention. You know, um, yeah. it's 90% of, of what, of what success or even, you know, I mean, it's, it's a miracle. Anytime that you put pen to paper and, and make a final cut, uh, on something and, and, and have a movie done anytime any of that is done. It, it's, a, a it's a miracle. It's a miracle. It is a tiny miracle, it especially is. when you do it yourself and you don't have any kind of, you know, something driving you uh, like a paycheck. <laughs> you yeah. Know? I mean, yeah. my God. It's funny. You always have these, uh, these dreams. We're going to Sundance, yeah. you know? Um, and, uh, you know, you got to settle for, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Torrance International Film Festival. You know, so. you're, uh, it's, I mean, it's all political, the film festival thing. I have got to applaud you. Um, in yeah. fact, I will applaud you um, because Thank Brothers you. Inc. is really kicking ass as well as Do It Yourself, your short films. Um, they're really kicking ass on the film festival circuit. And that shit is not easy at all, no. but it's winning awards. No. I mean, you've won award, Brothers Inc. has yeah. won awards, right? Yeah, yeah, won uh, Best Comedy in Toronto and uh, Best Comedy at uh, LA Indies. So that, it's a festival that's been around for about eight years. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think seven or eight nominations. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's playing now, what, where's it playing next? That's what I'd like to know. We are going to be at the uh, NoHo Sin Fest next the month. Sin in Fest? The actual Theater in an is actual that, theater can be amazing. Oh my god! And that's sin like C I N, right? Not S I N, yeah. right? Yeah. Like so if cinematic. you're a church goer, you can go there as well. But you know, we're Same. all sinners. We're all sinners. So each of us in our own way. Each of us in our own way. I'm going to show. First of all, I'm going to show uh, us in episode ten of Lunch Therapy. This is now episode two hundred and eighty-three. This is oh, us in Lord. episode okay. ten. So this is when we were like, you know, teenagers. So there we are. Okay. So oh, you were the first <laughs> guest on the show. Um, oh, man. Yeah, there yeah. you are. Look how young we look. Yeah, I have no idea what you cut, but I'm sure it was uh, uh, some sort of uh, gin and juice, perhaps. You yeah. know, it, it, the thing, I look at myself back then. I was doing the quarantine comedy show. I think we started our shows at the same time. And yeah. uh, and I was looking at myself. And so Mara did a, uh, you're talking about uh gray away or like the crepe away crepe, yeah crepe so more, I was like, oh, it's so gray i think you know you get so uh wrapped up in how you look and so yeah. uh she dyed my hair and that's what <laughs> that's what came out i look like i look like hunter s thompson i don't know what i was thinking that was like oh and also i asked you to be on the show and you didn't know like do i come on as a character do i come on as myself so you were like this hollywood producer guy yeah, and, and yeah. somewhere I, in the I, interview, I, I, I say, like, who are you? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what, what, what is this? What am I doing here? What is my motivation, Joel? Tell me about <laughs> it. I didn't get any sides. I don't have any lines. This is just, yeah. we're just going to wing it. Yeah. Uh, it was so fun, man. You're, and your show, I got to tell you, it's really, you really grabbed this thing and you made it something really uh, unique and special. And you did a great job. In fact, uh, back in those days, the internet yeah. connection was such a big issue because oh, we would freeze up and all that. So, um, they've launched a few, uh, satellites since then. And I think he worked out the kinks pretty well. Yeah. You know, Rex Sykes says we were on Rex's show yesterday, Kamala, Ginny, and, and I were on the show. Oh, cool. really fun show. It's on uh, the LA Tribune, uh, Facebook page. If anybody wants to watch it again, um, awesome. it's, it was super fun. So, but he says yeah. you, uh, look a lot like, um, Michael J. Fox. I don't know. Yes, Michael J. Fox. I got to tell you, man, that guy was one of my heroes, you know, Back to the Future and all that kind of stuff. I, in fact, uh, when I, I started acting pretty young, but uh, when Michael J. Fox came out, it was like all of a sudden I was like legit, you know, because the break the breakdowns in, in the San Francisco and the Bay Area is where I came up. Yeah. Uh, every breakdown, every other breakdown was like, we need a Michael J. Fox type. Really? So I was I was working a lot. 
And uh, in fact, I did a, a, a show, a traveling show, uh, Back to the Future. I played Marty McFly. You and, did? Uh, yeah. And it was live on stage. And there was a, I got, I, I skateboarded live on stage. Can you do some stage. of it? Can you do some of it for and, us? Yeah. And, and there was a DeLorean. We had a DeLorean. Uh, Michael Summers played uh, Doc. We were, we were, we were really good. Um, but it was like, you made a time machine out of a DeLorean? <laughs> you, that's great. You, you made, yeah, I get it. It was a like, your future, Marty. Your future. Uh, it was so much fun. Oh, you do all the characters. That's I could good. do it all. I was like, I could maybe play Doc <clears throat> with a yeah. little hair Marty, gel. Marty. Yeah. yeah, I could totally do. Marty, it. Your I don't know. Marty. I don't know if we can do it. Or maybe that's maybe that's Jim <laughs> from Taxi. But anyway, I don't know. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you got, you got applause yeah, from, from Ginyel yeah, like out there. Oh, bravo, bravo, huh? yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I got to tell you, <clears throat> Bob Dylan started out as a Woody Guthrie impersonator. <clears throat> Did you know that? He was like no, a cover band. He was a one-man yeah. cover band. Yeah, yeah, in, in, uh, in coffee shops and stuff. He was playing yeah. that stuff before he got his own sound and in his own rhythm. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of Ar Arlo Guthrie, um, in, uh, in Bob Dylan. Both I, I have both of their, I, I, I've been going back to my roots of growing up, uh, in this, in the sixties and seventies and, and with, with a hippie mother listening to all this music and I've been collecting vinyl and, and all that kind of stuff. I've been listening to a lot of Arlo Guthrie and Oh, I love and, Arlo Guthrie. Yeah, me too, man. He was a and, Woody uh, Guthrie, who's the dad of Arlo Guthrie, Woody, right? Yeah. He was he a was Woody the, Guthrie. But Arlo Guthrie, I have I I won't tell the story now, but I did meet Arlo Guthrie one time. And no. uh, yeah. wow. I yeah. found his house. I, I, that story. I found his house. I knocked on the door. I just knew it was his house. Well, I'll tell it uh, very quickly. Did you, you like you went to go borrow a cup of sugar? I was in Stockbridge, Woody. Massachusetts. You know, Woody. Stockbridge, Massachusetts. In in um, yeah, in uh, uh, Alice's restaurant. He says, "Let me tell you about the town of Stockbridge, Massachusetts." And so I'm yes. there, and I'm thinking, I wonder if Arlo Guthrie lives here. And I drove by this church that had a big um, ribbon on it, and I thought, I bet that's his house. I totally did that. I pulled over, knocked on the door, no. and wow. uh, he answered the door. It was the weirdest thing. He answered the door. He has very white hair. And I was a huge, I was a big fan. And uh, he said, uh, he said, you want to come in? And my girlfriend no. at the time and I came in. We sat down. He even played the guitar. I was so shy, though, that I couldn't even talk. I mean, I couldn't even function. So I just kind of sat there. We sat there for a while. He was playing the guitar. And then Holy we left. Crap. It was like too surreal, you know? It was way too surreal. Oh, my God. That is absolutely, that's great. That's a good yeah. one, man. Uh, yeah. No, don't hold back on that story, man. Tell the world that one. That's a good one. It is a good one. Uh, yeah. yeah, he says, are you telling me you're going to arrest me? You got me sitting on this bench. On the group you W vote. bench with a bunch <laughs> of father rapers and mother scratchers or whatever. <laughs> you got, I, that I figured that two piles of garbage are better than one pile of garbage. So rather, rather than, than that bring one that one, one up here. On now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I when I was a kid, I knew that whole routine by heart. Oh, yeah, me man. too. Yeah, me too. Oh, Lauren's here. Yeah. Lauren Wesley Ackerman is here all the way from Illinois. Nice. New Champagne, I think. I um, he's a comedian. Area. He comes out here and nice. does comedy. Did a show the other night. I saw it online. Pretty cool stuff. Um, send cool. Carlo cool. a message today and tell him you were that guy back then. <laughs> Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Arlo. Arlo, of course. Arlo. Yeah, I'll, I'll send him a yeah, message. Yeah, yeah. He actually, yeah. Um, yeah, pretty cool. I heard that you were doing a show in San Francisco, and suddenly somebody mm -hmm. tapped you on the shoulder and was like, do you think I can get up there? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, well, I got it. I have a oh, story, God. too, that, that's kind of similar. No, I don't know. Well, I grew I, – I, we, we lived in, in San Francisco in the in – the, um, uh, hold on a second. Something just popped. That's another song. Oh, yeah. Coming into yeah. Los Angeles, picking up a couple of keys. That's another Arlo Guthrie song. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Something came up on my. Was it the phone? Uh, phone came up. No. But, Is so your Fisher I Price phone ringing? <laughs> what they're buying? Sell. Sell. Oh, they're selling. 
Why? <laughs> anyway, so uh, yes, I was doing an op- I was running an open mic at a, at a place called the Black Thorn Tavern on mm-hmm. Irving Street in San Francisco, yeah. and and uh, and and uh, I, I was really busy. And I, I'm going through all the comics and everything. I get a tap on the shoulder, and he goes, "Hey, do you got a spot for tonight?" And uh, I go, "I don't know, man. It's really busy. We got a lot of guys." And I turn around, and it's Robin Williams, and I'm like, no "Oh way. shit, you're up next!" And <laughs> it was uh, it was wild because it went out like wildfire, and people just all of a sudden converged on this bar, the Blackthorn Tavern. It used to be called the Golden Gromit, which was actually a comedy club back in the day. Mm-hmm. And um, and he used to go there for comedy. He used to, he started there, wow. and um, in San Francisco, and it, we used to go to the same uh, dry cleaners place, the Aristocrat. I remember that. And one time, I remember he was like coming coming behind me. I could see him out of the corner of my eye, and I'm dropping off my laundry, and I go, "Hey, could you not mix up our stuff? Because you know this happened last time, and he's a brief guy, and I'm a boxer guy, and it gets really confusing." And uh, and he was like laughing. He was a really good dude. But wow. at the, that cool. night, I mm-hmm. said, you're up next. And he did 45 minutes. People were out in the streets. Oh, they, they were double parked. All the cars just stopped in the streets. And people were just getting out. They were standing on their cars to look in the window. And it really? was crazy. Was this, was this pre-cell phones and pre-iPhones? Uh, no, like it, how- was right, it, was, it was right. Cell phones had a huge thing to do with it. But yeah. it, there, the, the internet wasn't really there where you could go on Facebook and post pictures and shit like that. So yeah. really, but the, but everybody was. But back then it was like the flip phones and you won't believe what's happening. And uh, it, it, the phone, the, the the cell phones took off. Uh, they made it take off for sure. Um, That's super but, fun. Hey, yeah. I'm going to show so a clip from Brothers Inc. real quick. Okay. All right. We're, we're moving right. on because we got we got a contest to get to too. Okay. Yeah. So, no. So we oh, we just had our that was that's like a new set new segment. I guess it's not brushes okay. with greatness because that's already somebody else's segment. But you know, oh. I don't know. There there is no Letterman show anymore. So I guess maybe no, brushes no, with you greatness. Can take that. That's yours. It's open. <laughs> it's not mine. All right, so this is a scene or this is a trailer for Brothers Inc. The the show that's sweeping the nation. Which I think should probably be a series, and maybe this is maybe you made this. <laughs> well, that's the idea. We're working the on the idea, next right? episode right now. And by yeah. the way, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. uh, Joel Marshall, co-star in Brothers Inc. You won't recognize uh, him though. He's so he's just so deep in character. A fantastic pot farmer, and you'll recognize him. <laughs> uh, so yeah, All right. go Here ahead, go. roll. Up. Yeah, roll. Up. The yoga studio's got a camera. We got two in the van. The man over oh. pops up, and we got three in the bank. Three in the bank. That's right. Three in the bank. Now take this bag. And this note, you want to hand it to Gladys. She's a fantastic up-and-coming actress, and she's really fun to work with. She's going to hand the bag back to you. You come back to one, and then we yell, cut. Okay? Ready to go, Mr. Fontaine? Okay, everyone, settle. This is it. Yeah, uh, this is Jake. Where the fuck are you? He's got thumbs the size of your fucking feet! Thumbs? That might be the dumbest thing you have ever said. Where's my fucking weed? There's been some miscommunication. Ah, there he is. Sniper diver. I'm a nice little line, mate. No, I'm not. No, I, I, I got I, an idea. I love it. I'm in. I love it. These clowns for real? Mindless or mastermind? They're just stupid. Yeah. Yeah, I like it when you go, I got an idea in the other day. Way, I love it. Yeah, that Deborah Alexander in the in the cop car with Michael Monks, who I think you've had on the show. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. A fantastic actor and director himself. Um, and, uh, yeah, that is such Super a fun, fun. project. Super yeah. fun. So, um, yeah, fun maybe we can all converge on so, that. Festival. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna it's be screening stupid. next month in uh, at NoHo Sinfest uh, in North Hollywood. So can't wait. Oh my god, it's so cool. All right, so I gotta yeah. go right into the contest because okay, you know we only have so much time on the show, and Bring I want to get everybody. So everybody who's in the chat room, I'm gonna show a pro. Well, let's get into it, and then I'll explain it to you. There's no, gonna wait be a little, minute. Hold on. You, you kind of mentioned I, I I'm not gonna look. 
I'm going to go off yeah. camera and then come back in. So you're just going to close your eyes for 10 seconds and I'm going to show a product. Oh, okay. And okay. then that's going to give the chat room a little bit of time to see if they can guess it before you open your eyes. And well, if they haven't guessed it by fair. then. Yeah. And so what it's the pro I'm going to show you like a product from the 70s. And then you're going to give okay. me the, the tagline. The, 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 the tagline. Yeah. This would be for radio or television? Um, television. Yeah. Generally television. Okay. Um, or I don't. Yeah. So we're going to see. Okay. Oh, wait. Where can we see it? Brothers Inc. We can see it at the film festivals right now. Um, and it is at. I'm going to have to put something on the screen or something. I'll put it in the show notes where how to get tickets yeah. for the premiere. Oh, um, also, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, we've got a good chat room here. We've got some real smart people in the room. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, this, this is a, a tough match. Guy. It's a mismatch. All right, so we're going to do, uh, there's going to be a little intro. There's going to be another commercial because this is sponsored by Crepe Erased. It'll be a very short one, um, and then we can get <laughs> into the show. I love that. Look. Completely invisible, not a line on my face. Crepe away your crepes. Crepe erase. Crepe erase. Crepe away it's a beautiful your product. Crap that some crepe skin. <laughs> okay, so we're here, and this is the uh, the contest. All right, okay. Now, um, got some creepy music I'm going on. This is called, yeah, you can't look. I'll tell you when you well, stop okay. looking. There's a timer. This is a totally new thing. The chat room is over there on the right. So if you chat, there it says it looks like a pile of shit. <laughs> the uh, Crepe Race. It's hilarious. Baby, so, baby, baby shit. Eating I don't all know, know if we can read that chat box, but we can, you know, at least we can see if somebody beats you. Um, somehow there's like a timer. Somehow there's a scoreboard. Somehow this is going to all work out. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and then. I will tell you when you can open them. Okay. And um, this is Lunch Therapy presents Ancient Products and their slogans brought to you by Crepe Erase. Um, here we go. So everybody, you just give me the the slogan for this object. Let's see if anybody comes up with it. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I got to do the 10 sections. <laughs> this is high tech. Boney, what is going on here? Oh okay. my goodness. Hold on. You can't. You can't. Okay. I got to do 10 seconds. Okay. All right. Here we go. Wow. That's fast. Oh, here we go. I think we got it. All right. Now you can open your eyes. Go ahead and open your oh. eyes, Tom. Oh, crap. You see it? What? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Wiener Schnitzel. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what this is. It looks like one of those uh, Russian eggs that. We, we did have a winner. We did have a winner. What is, what is it? What is it? Let me hear it. Who got that? Was that Jamie? Pamela got it. Weebles wobble, Pamela? but they, oh, don't, fall they don't fall down. That is a weeble. Okay. That is a weeble. Wobble. So hummingbirds get one oh, point. God. No, I got to tell you right now, I wasn't allowed to watch television when I was a kid. So oh, it's going to be rough. Perfect. This is the perfect contest for you then. <laughs> no junk food and that included TV, which is... <laughs> another story. Another oh show. Oh my god, this is great. <laughs> um, okay, so now, uh, oh wow, Chuck is a as a Huskies fan. That's cool. Um, we like that. Okay, so next one. Um, okay, chat room. I'm gonna start this going. I, this is a really old looking ad for something, um, and it's very very tiny. <laughs> I don't know if you can read it. Um, it's got a nude woman in it. Um, this is scandalous. This is totally scandalous. Um, let's see if anybody gets this one. This is very obscure, but all of us know it. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, looks like we got one. Okay. Um, okay. go, uh, uh, okay. You know that one? Uh oh, <laughs> oh shit. this chat room got it already. Maybe 10 seconds oh. is too long. No, I don't, man. I, I'm I suck at this. This is just you're, terrible. You're screwed because you didn't weren't allowed to watch TV. See your mom. We're, you you're gonna have to. Um, I All don't right, know. What, what is this? Um, this is called Calgon. Oh, Calgon, take me away. That's right, Calgon, take me away. All right, you got one. 
Um, God, but you don't get a point for it. There's nothing in there that tells me that. I know it's a that's right. too obscure. Okay, here's maybe an easy. Oh. oh shoot! Oh, think about it. They get ten seconds. You get ten seconds. Maybe that's how it works. I don't know. Hmm. I, I, I think know. I should get ten extra seconds. Uh, <laughs> I think you should. I think maybe we'll do oh, that. Long maybe enough won't for time. A, long enough for a man, but made for a woman. Oh, you got it. Nice. Thank you. That was deli That was truly good. You get an applause for that okay. one. Okay. There you go. All right. I got that. All right. Hey, Strong enough for a man, but made for but a made woman. for a woman. That's, That's a good, good one. That's really a good one. Yeah. Rex yeah. got it. Um, the fresh maker. <laughs> Strong the enough for a man. Maker. Yeah. We're definitely getting a lot of people that knew it. Yeah. And you got it. So I'm going to give you that one for sure. Um, because you're, uh, you know, challenged. T TV challenged. Okay, here's an yes, old <laughs> picture of product. Close your eyes. I, mean, I don't know. Okay. No, I think you just guess it. I think since you're, you know, I, you were. Um, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Well, yes, that's excellent. This one actually has two. So that's one of them. The other one is really good too, I got to admit. Um, let's see if somebody. So Guinelle came up with the plop, plop, fizz, fizz, which is terrific. Um, Strong enough for a man, but just not enough for a woman. Never enough. <laughs> plop, plop, fix, fix. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Does anybody know what the other slogan is? It's a good one. And you, I think all of us know it. Just so you know. Um, that's a spicy God, meatball. Here God, we go. God. Here it is. Okay. So the first one, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Yep. And the second one. Or, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Rex Sykes got it too, right at the last, right at the buzzer. Right at the buzzer, he got it. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. <laughs> Do you remember that? I don't I know if that's really, technically, I don't know if that's really a ta uh, like a, uh, a a branding line. Really? Because, but it did. It was part I of a campaign. It it's very yeah, catchy. Okay. You remember it now. So, you know, a million yeah, years do. later. I do. Believe so, I ate the whole. Thing. Had this I stomach can't grumbling. Believe I oh, ate really? the whole thing. Yeah, of course. What else uh, are you gonna? What else are you gonna take? You know. Okay. All right. So All right. Um, moving yeah, on. I remember. It. Okay. So the next one. Um, hummingbirds are winning. Oh, this is just a picture because I didn't get a chance to show it before, and it's not. There's no slo slogan or tagline or anything. We were talking about ocelots. Well, I do. Yeah, ocelots. I, I used to take care of ocelots at a resort. They are terrible creatures, not to be trusted. <laughs> oh, no, not to be trusted. Don't ever turn your back on an ocelot. I'll tell you that, and I got the scar to prove it. But, well, but, uh, but the mustache. Do you know I who that, that guy is? I think, that, I think that's good for you, Joel. I think this is really. This oh, I need to get some more wax. No, you, you get a mustache like that, my friend. You're gonna book everything in Hollywood. I'll tell oh, you that. Oh, you know it. You know it. Salvador Dali and his cat, and his cat's name was Babu, the ocelot. Pretty cool. Not to be trusted. Manly, yes, but made for a woman. <laughs> Dali, everybody loves Dali. Howard is a modern day Salvador Dali. I don't know if you know Howard or Ronan, um, Tom, but you should. Hello, Dali. Um, all right, yeah, Salvador Dali. Loretta says, does not look familiar. Does not look familiar. Um, okay, now we're moving on to the next one. I'm not doing the timer. I'm just doing it. You can okay. look at it. Everybody guess. Well, hello, Dolly. Cute. Yeah, that is a cute animal. Um, anyone, anyone, life? I mean, come on, everybody knows this one, right? Oh, Joel, you're killing me. Uh, okay, so uh, there's a kid. He's got a striped shirt. Lauren got it. Mikey likes it. Mikey likes it? Mikey he likes, likes it. it. It's actually... He likes he, it. Yeah, he, he likes, likes it. it. Yeah, okay, I remember that one. He yeah. likes it. Yeah. Hey, Mikey. I like the box. I, I like the box. I think they should bring that back. Some of this old advertisement, I think, worked really well. And they, they, they ought to... They ought to bring it back. Bringing. I think you're right. Yeah. I found all the yeah. old products. Yeah, it's okay. Everybody got this one. 
Um, Loretta says I can't read it. Oh yeah, it's hard to read these things because it's so tiny. Mikey! He likes it. Hey, Mikey. He won't eat it. He hates Mikey, everything. He likes it. Okay, this is a really kind of creepy one. Um, it's the AT&T slogan. Yeah. Let's see if anybody um, can guess that one. It's, it, and that's my that's my clue. It sounds kind of creepy. I don't know if they would do it anymore. I don't know if they would do it anymore. AT&T. Yeah. And it's a big company, of course. Oh, too big. We're listening. Too big to fail. <laughs> I like uh, that. We're listening. That's their slogan. Maybe it is. AT maybe it was their slogan. Watch what you say. <laughs> Watch what you say. We're listening. <laughs> I'm going to try and make this chat box. Um, AT&T. I just did an AT&T. Here it is. Uh, did you? What is it? Reach out yeah. and touch someone. Howard oh, Aronin got is, it. That is a little bit. Reach Isn't out that and touch creepy? someone. That is, reach that out could and be, touch uh, someone. These days. That could be a little creepy and... <laughs> yeah, that could be. I could see that. <laughs> uh, secret deodorant. Uh, we're ripping you off daily. <laughs> Somebody. Somebody. Um, okay, so My now... tagline, the tagline that I wrote for AT&T was since AT&T, uh, we've been there since 19... Well, oh, the good word. Yeah, it was called the good word. Oh. We've been bringing the good word since 1926. We're AT&T. Wow. That's good. But anyway. This is a product yeah, that I didn't know existed. Um, and there is no slogan because um, I think the, the box says it all. Um, it's called Poop Like a Champion. It's the ultra fiber What's serum. Them? You use like a laxative instead of milk? Yeah, this is a free, um, I guess this is a free advertisement for this because I just saw it while I was looking at products and uh, I don't know. I don't know if it actually exists. Uh, maybe we can well, write a slogan for it. It's non-GMO, so they got that going for you. But uh... Uh, Ease your way into the day, I think is my slogan for it. I can't believe I crapped the whole thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it tastes better going in. <laughs> Reach out and touch someone who has used secret, eaten the hell out of life, and is ready to jump in the bath and take me away. There we go. They're selling multiple yeah, well, products in one set. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. She should write gen jingles. I'm a contender. Joe Biden's morning wish. <laughs> is that politics? I don't know. Uh, Loretta, she says she's a failure at the quiz. There are no failures in lunch therapy. Oh, Loretta. No failures. Loretta? No, there's no. just got you coming and going no as better. Rex is one. <laughs> okay, well, let's have got a couple more here. This is an easy one uh, that I'm sure Tom will get immediately. Grape nuts. Grape nuts. Oh, nature's tree. I don't know. Uh, um, it's it's a better than eating dirt. It's a, Grape it's a nuts. question. Better than yeah. eating dirt. Tastes like stale bread. Let's see. <laughs> Last week's meal, grape nuts. There are no grapes in these nuts. Um, there no, are no grapes grape or nuts. nuts. I don't know what it I is. I love grape nuts. It's a constant grape source nuts. of uh, humor. Ever eat a pine tree? Yule Gibbons? Oh, well, Rex most parts of close. a pine tree are edible. Right. So no one gets a point on that one. I thought it was easy. Of course. Uh, this is just a weird ad that I found. Um, it's a it's a 10 megabyte hard disk. It's the hard disk you've been waiting for. This is from the 70s. Comes in and comes wow. easy, goes out rough. Okay. That's... 10 megabytes for three, $339. Oh, yeah. 3,000. 3,000 and 398? Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. yeah. Rex says, name the man holding the box, Yule Gibbons. That's the man. Yeah, that's crazy, Yule that hard disk. Um, you could put like one PDF on there. They didn't have PDFs, man. Though, I don't think. Yeah, I, yeah. We were using floppy disks for a long time. I, I can't believe that. they even had a hard drive back then. I, I had computer. My first computer didn't have a hard drive. It just had floppy disks. Yeah, crazy. But you know how that goes. Three K. It changed. So Three kilobytes. Fast. Okay, how about this one? Okay, who is this? So this what is, is this? Uh, Wendy's. Oh, and Wendy. This is old ladies. This is from the eighties. So maybe you were allowed to watch TV. Oh, where's the meat? It's close. Where's the meat? It's very close. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? There you go. Where's the beef? Okay. Where's the beef? I'm going to give you a point for that one. I mean, okay. it's five to two. 
You better get some kind of point. I don't know. Oh, this is just Quisp cereal. I don't know if you ever had this, but it was really good. Um, really good. Chris. So a lot of people got Where's the Beef. Snap, Crackle, Pop is definitely not there. Yeah, you know, I have a friend who plays the character Snap, by the way. I know oh, really? I don't mean to brag or anything. Andy Hirsch, he is Snap, the voice of Snap. And maybe we'll have him on the show sometime. I don't know. I mean, that could be really cool. Um, my slogan for a Quisp is, <clears throat> I just wrote my own. I don't, oh, wait, shoot, I missed it. Um, I don't remember last night, but my feet feel really weird. That's my slogan for it. <laughs> Last night I woke up wearing nothing but my rain boots and a tank top. Time there for you go. Chris. There you go, Chris. Time for a bowl of Chris. Two free slogans for you. Uh, how about this one? Oh, that's Gumby. Uh, this is really the Saturday uh, Night Live slogan that I'm looking for here. Uh, Gumby, don't play that. I'm uh, Gumby, damn it. I'm Gumby, damn it. <laughs> Yeah. Now, was that really a slogan for Gumby? That was just that on, on Saturday Night Live. If someone could name the uh, that, actor that Eddie, comedian, Eddie Murphy. Yes. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Gumby, damn it. I'm Gumby, oh, damn it. Man. I'll be Gumby. I'll be Gumby, damn chat it. Box. I need to make this check box bigger next time. It's hard to read. People need, are going to need to watch the show on a giant screen when oh, we have no, these kind of things. Mr. Bill. Oh, oh, no. Mr. Bill, I just threw him in there. He's super yeah, he, fun, he, Mr. Bill. He, he deserves he, to be there. I can't believe that he's not a viral sensation. Back, you know, back then when he came up, there was no viral. No, but he there was, was no viral. Virus. You know, in paper his own race. way. Do you know the uh, slogan for paper, paper race? race? Uh, and this is our disappear sponsor. your problems. Your problems disappear. I like the way Kamala says the chat box is useless. It is. It's totally useless. It's so small. Nobody can see it. Um, oh, no, Mr. Bill. Um, the slogan is, crap, that's some crepey skin. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's that's it. All right. This has been oh, crap. Ancient Products and their slogans uh, with Tom Kearney. Tom, I think you, I think you lost. But, you know. As we say on Lunch Therapy, there are no losers on Lunch Therapy. Everyone who, who got three? Who got three? I want to know who got three. <laughs> Dish people will leave you. <laughs> Smear some shit. These people are coming up with their own slogans for crepe race. Smear some shit on oh, their face. Oh, crap. I got crepe. <laughs> Yay. Holy crap. Um, I'm sure a f more than a few people got. Maybe uh, Lauren Wesley Ackerman got three, I think. Uh, probably okay. Chuck. Camilla for Jack sure. Guignel, I don't Camilla, know. Take a break but from she the did. crap. <laughs> All right, so now, okay, so now, okay, in the, since you were the first interview, and yes. now it's, you know, I don't know, we've interviewed, I've interviewed like 70 people on the show. I'm gonna show three clips of inspirational moments from Lunch Therapy with other guests. And you and I are going to, oh. um, enjoy them everyone's gonna enjoy them this is a clip that's never been seen before ever yeah steven tobolowski no. talking about something that we can all relate to which is where inspiration comes from sometimes it comes from uh when life hands you lemons as it were here he is ah. i had broken my neck right really? uh yeah oh uh God. in 2008 riding a horse what? in iceland wow Broke my neck, fatal injury. That's what the doctor ended up saying, oh, of course. Yeah, it's like, obviously not. Yeah. And uh, so while I was recovering is when I started writing stories, true stories about my life as a legacy for my kids in case I would have died. And that's when David Chen in Seattle, back then he was in Boston at Harvard, said he had seen Stephen Tobolowsky's birthday party. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'd like to do something like that, but as a podcast, can, can you do true stories? I said, well, actually, I'm writing true stories now. He said, well, I'll record them, uh, you know, over Skype, and, and you do it. So we did the first 25 stories, and then Simon and Schuster said, can we do a book of these stories? And I'm like, yeah. And then the stories ended up going over the world. And then in Ireland, they said, we'll bring you over here uh, if you'll tell stories in a pub. 
and so cool. uh, you know we'll we'll sign your book and yeah. you, you know and then people start calling them up because and then the story and now the stories are whispering saying like man it's COVID <laughs> you're not going to have this chance again to write so get to it and be writing. Yeah. All right, so yep. that that is just a little um, inspiration for people out there that might be having a, a tough time right now. Um, he broke his neck falling off a horse, and it propelled him to start writing and eventually got published even. And he's Stephen Toblowski. Did this, this happen during quarantine? Um, he, no, it happened early on, but during quarantine is when he's really been, you know, spurred on writing. to write more. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I think I quarantine think is another are... thing that has, you know, it either like knocks us down completely or we get up um, Chumbawamba style. And uh, well, I, I think that uh, there's a renaissance happening right now with creativity. I think people are inspired by, mm -hmm. you know, trying to think about the different possibilities that because at the end of the day, all you have is you and your thoughts and your ideas. So make it happen. You know, I think yeah. that that's a good message. I think also um, we should all know that we do get knocked down and we do have bad days and we, we you know, getting back up is hard, but we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to the. Chumbawamba, Camel is saying, who's Chumbawamba? They're the ones who sing the song, I get knocked <laughs> down, but I get up again. I'm never going to make it down. I don't know. I don't know the words, actually. I, I kind of faked the words there for a second. You know that song? Yeah, but failure is part of success, too, you know, so don't yeah. be afraid of it. You got to take uh, you got to take some chances in, in all this. And yeah. uh, if you're afraid of of failure, um, you embrace it because uh what you know how many times did uh yeah i mean that that's really true uh, about it you know like uh the, the light bulb uh you know, that was his invention that worked but he had 11,000 failures before that 11,000 so, yeah i get knocked down <laughs> like but i get up again all right i'm going to get a cover of that song and play it on the show someday okay now this um this is another guest um of the show and uh, he just is, his name's Ray De Laurentiis. He wrote for the Fairly Odd Parents, but he writes a lot of animated stuff. And this is just well, a little that. bit of advice yeah. that he gave. And I think it's very pertinent yeah. for all of us. You know, over the years, when I had to develop a really uh, bulletproof uh, sort of creative process so I wouldn't get burned out. And mm -hmm. it happened when I was working on a show for the show I sold from the screensaver. The very mm -hmm. mean people at Saban said to me at the time, they said, um, you need to write 80 final drafts in a, in a year. Wow. And I said, that's impossible. <laughs> so I went, I went to a therapist and yeah. uh, he basically said to me, you just need complete autonomy from their needs. Uh, and that will at least open the door for you. Yeah. And I said, that's interesting. And I already was a fairly autonomous mm. person. Yeah. So I'm, like, I'm going to try that. And the second I stopped caring, I didn't stop caring if the work got done. I stopped worrying about them being mad. Yeah. Or what yeah. they thought of it. The second mm -hmm. that was out of my head, I suddenly had like 60% more energy. And, and what I did was I just started putting together the pieces of this sort of creative process over the year, which I've now taught to a bunch of kids. And I told you this before, it's confidence. Yeah. And the way you get it is basically you look at everything in the, your whole life that you didn't think you could do that you did. Mm. You, you pulled off and you write a list. Of it. it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you got a date with somebody you didn't think you could date. You passed the class. You didn't think you, it doesn't matter. You make a list so you start saying oh i can do things i don't think i can do i have a history yeah. of that intensity which has to go out on the on what you're doing and never back in on you because it shuts you down you have to have some fun it, you have to have fun with creativity and i think with everything to some degree even if it's acerbic fun yeah uh you know then there's autonomy which really is split into two things it's like you know what i'm not going to worry about what other people think of me or this mm -hmm. and i'm not going to worry about what i get from it I'm not doing it to get something. I'm doing it to give to it. Wow. So that was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's cool, really guys. true. I just finished what Brian Cranston's book, and he talked about that too, uh, about just doing your best work and just have fun. You know, he had success much later in life, uh, and it's an inspiration to all of us. Yeah. But he um, he said to just you, I, I there was a shift of consciousness when I just said, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it and I'm going to have fun and I'm going to do my best work 
and, you know, spill the beans on the table and that's it. And then walk away from it. And that's when things started to click for him. Uh, Richard Lawson now is the last one we're going to show. He was a guest um, and he's got some very relevant words to what you just said. Yeah. Yeah. See, one of the things, one of the things that, that is staple to my teaching is that dreams don't have expiration dates. Oh, I like that. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's never too late. Never, never too late. We happen to be in a business and a profession that is not limited by age. You know, you yeah. look at some, you look at some of the, you know, look, you, George Burns and, and Gracie Allen, they worked until they died. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I feel like there's uh, either alive or there's dead. <laughs> and if you're alive, get out there. Get out there and do it. Don't sit there and look at like, oh, I'm too old. There's so many people that do that. They, they just say, I'm too old and I don't want to do anything. Yeah. And, and uh, you know what? You can. <laughs> you yeah, can absolutely. Right up there's, off the couch. There's two stages to death. And a lot of people are operating in stage one, which is apathy. Mm -hmm. You know, where you are spiritually mm -hmm. dead. Yeah. And stage two is when your body stops. You know, but... But people are oft times dead long before their body stops, and um, and and if people are connected to their purpose, like what is your reason for being? Why are you here? You know, yeah. um, um, what do you do extraordinarily well? And 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 are you helping others to? Do what it is you do. Yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you helping others? Yeah. You know, that's that's really. I, I listened to Denzel Washington this morning, actually, and he was talking about that, about doing what what you're inspired to do in life. And, uh, you know, I, I was in the corporate world and I, I came back to all this. But he was saying about, you know, he always was told, oh, you better find a backup plan. You better have a backup plan. Right. And he was like, screw that. You, what do you want? You want something to fall back on? He goes, don't fall back. Fall forward. Move it. Move it forward. How many times you fail, doesn't matter. You audition until you get it. Yeah. So, Denzel Washington, know. check it out. Yeah, Denzel Washington, words of wisdom. All right. He did a commencement speech, and I don't know what the school was, but I was like, whoa. It was cool. Oh, well, check. Is it on the internet? Yeah. It's on the YouTube. Yeah. I don't well, know how I found it. But it was, it was there. And, uh, delivered yeah, to you it was pretty cool. By YouTube. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah. I would love to talk more about the things that you're doing. There's this, this thing called cure yeah. seekers, um, where you got yeah. stung by bees. I have, but I have to end the show. <laughs> I have to end the show, but we'll yeah. talk about that another time. Um, maybe we, okay. I can show a bit of it on the show on Tuesday or something like that. But this has been yeah, super well, fun, Tom. Huh? If you just, if, if you just uh, Google it, uh, it's the first thing that pops up. It's a really cool show. and It's, it's really cool. Tom we're got... Gonna be into, we're yeah. going to be diving into, on uh, the next episode, uh, psilocybin and how it's being used to treat PTSD, depression, uh, addiction, and, and all that kind of stuff throughout cure different seekers. cultures. Cure seekers. Cure seekers. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of us need some cures these days. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, Rex, check out Rex's show on LA Tribune. Um, the true death is when the dream passes away. We must keep the flames burning. Yeah, fan the flames, fan the flames. I'm right. I'm, I've got a um, really nice, <laughs> it's funny because the song that at the end of the show is Manic Depression. <laughs> but I, I don't know why, <laughs> but that's what it's, we're going to be playing that? here. Let's so, bring it home, Joel. <laughs> I'm going to bring it home with Manic Depression. Thanks so much for being here, Tom. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you, guys. Hey, it's an absolute pleasure, Joel. You look great, man. And right. uh, it's good to see you virtually, but I hope to see you soon. Yeah, me too. All right. See you soon. All right. I'll see you at the show. No Woo! host in fact. Later. I'm just going to play a little bit of this. Uh, they're called the Lexington Woo! Lab Band. It is right. actually Manic quite great. Depression. This song makes me happy, even though it's about depression. Sweet 
See you all next Tuesday for more lunch therapy.